Now, from across the Tri-State, this is KHQA Sports. We begin tonight with a potential revenge story brewing in Illinois girls soccer. It was Q&D versus Mantino tonight, a rematch of last year's state championship, a game which Q&D of course won in a shutout. But was Mantino up to the task here in 2013? Short answer is no. Q&D blanks them once again in the 1A Mendota Super Sectional. 2 to nothing as Cassidy Foley scores both tallies in this one. So Q&D on to Naperville in the state semifinals once again. And they will take on Johnsburg in their next game. That to be played Friday at 7 p.m. at North Central College in Naperville. And in case you're curious, on the other side of the state semifinals bracket in the 1A class, it is Alton Marquette taking on Chicago Parker. That game a little bit earlier in the day on Friday. So we are down to our final four. Q&D, a big weekend in store. Once again, we take it to baseball now. Class 2 action, Cannon and Ellsbury resuming this game from last night. Remember, it was delayed in the fourth at a 2-2 tie. Here's Ellsbury up 4-2, but Brandon Bearhorst getting it done with a little bit of defense here in the sixth, keeping it a two-run deficit. Still 4-2, Canton Bats come alive. Bottom of the sixth, Zach Dye doubles to right center, and that would score Cameron Durst all the way from first base. It's a 4-3 to three ball game at this point, and Canton not done. Same inning, Tyler Neiman's going to push a single to the right side here. That would score Levi Gauss, and folks, we are all tied up at four apiece in the late innings. Drama all the way in this ball game. Top of the seventh really seemed like Canton could do no wrong. Playing a little bit more defense here. Runner on second for Ellsbury, but Logan Brown starts the 6-4 double play for the first two outs of the inning. And then how about this play by Tyler Neiman behind the plate. Gets a huge pickoff at first base to end the inning. Canton just on fire no matter which way you cut it. And they would continue that in the late innings. We would go to extras tied at four. It was Reese Carmichael shutting down Ellsbury on the mound. We go to the bottom of the ninth, and Reese Carmichael is going to step up big at the dish. Folks, there is no wrong way to hit a walk-off home run. Reese Carmichael out to left field. This is going to send everybody home happy. A walk-off shot gives Canton the 5-4 to four win. Absolute bomb for Mr. Carmichael. Gets it done on the mound and then at the plate. Gives Canton the win 5-4 to four in nine innings as they will move on to the next round and take on Russellville in their next ball game. That is tomorrow at 5-30 in Canton in the sectional championship. What a night for the Canton Tigers. Five to four winners tonight. They continue their season tomorrow at home. Class three action was Palmyra and Hallsville tonight out at Flower City. This game was scoreless going into the fifth inning. Here's Palmyra keeping a run off the board very nicely with some good defense. You see the rundown executed perfectly here out at third base and Palmyra only trails one to nothing at this point in the ball game. They of course are the away team in this one, but Hallsville just would not go away with some timely hitting. This would double the lead to two to nothing as Hallsville goes up with an RBI single there in the bottom of the fifth. But here was your biggest shot. This blew the game wide open after two walks and an error made it three to nothing. Grand slam. You hate to see this if you're rooting for the Panthers. This just killed any momentum they might have had as Hallsville cruises to a nine to nothing win in this ball game. But really not indicative of how well Palmyra played in those first four and a half innings. But nine to nothing is your final. Unfortunately, as Palmyra's season does come to an end. We'll take you to softball action in Illinois now. West Hancock and Sherrard class two Bigsville sectional, but unfortunately Sherrard would strike first. This is the start that they were looking to get. I'm sure a two run home run for the home team here makes it two to nothing in favor of Sherrard, but that doesn't mean that Shelby Kaler wouldn't have a nice day in the circle. A strikeout here. She blows one by the hitter and also some great defense from the Titans in this one as well. Check out Allison DeWald behind the plate starting this pickoff down to second and the Titans Take care of business, getting the runner at first. Very nice play there. And now 6-0 Sherrard as their offense just wouldn't go away either. But Katie Schaefer is going to single in West Hancock's only run here. But unfortunately, I hate to bring you more bad news, but it was Sherrard, a 14-1 winner, ending West Hancock's season tonight. Other softball scores to tell you about in the 1A Calhoun sectional. It was Grigsville Perry also seeing their season come to an end. 15-0 Calhoun. Typically a powerhouse, and they show it tonight in five innings, a 15 to nothing win there. West Prairie also the victim of a walk off win at the hands of Newark tonight. Five to four, your final in that one. Two postponements, though. Q and D will end up playing tomorrow in Class 3A action in Jerseyville, as will QHS at Edwardsville. That to be played tomorrow as well. A couple final scores to give you. Kia Cut girls tennis team goes to the first round of state tonight, but unfortunately, Assumption gets the best of them. Five to nothing, your final there. Also in Iowa soccer, Central League boys advance on as they beat Danville, New London, one to nothing. They will play West Liberty on Wednesday in the sub-state semifinal. And finally, Fort Madison boys soccer season comes to an end. Four to one, they lose at the hands of Washington 